look at in several segments, several nine minute, 10 minute segments, look at multiplying and simplifying radical expressions. It's one of the most important topics to get a good handle on. I want to take you back to the fact that in our last segment, we said that the square root of x squared was equal to x because x times x is x squared. We are looking for the value times itself that will give you the radicand. So I'm going to approach simplifying radicals with some numerical values, and I'm going to do it in a couple of ways. I'll take a look at this, um, the, the way that most um, folks uh, take a look at this topic regularly. So what we do is we say to ourselves, what are the prime factors of the number 8? And the number 8 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2. And if in those prime factors we can find a pair, like right here, a pair of 2s, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. This right here is equal to just the whole number 2. And I can bring it out from underneath the radical, and I'll leave that lone factor underneath, and I am done. I have simplified this expression. So this is one approach. Write the number into its prime factors, and then take pairs out from under the radical, and look at those as integers. Another approach to this is to take 8 and write it as the product of two integers, where one of them is from this list of perfect squares, because I know that all of these I can take the square root of. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4, and 5, and 6, etc. So if I can think of 8 as the product of two numbers, in this case 4 times 2, where one of them is from this list, and I know that this 1 is a perfect square, because I know the square root of 4 is 2, I can take it out from under, and write it as its integer value, and bring down the other factor, the other radical factor. Um, let's, let's keep looking at, at both approaches and see how you can decide how you feel about these. Uh, let's take a look at the square root of 50, for example. And if you need to, you could come over here and say, okay, prime factors, 2 times 25, and oh yeah, there we go, 25 is 5 times 5. So there's my prime factors of 50, so I might write that as 2 times 5 times 5. And I would say, oh, look, there's a pair of common factors. The square root of that is 5. I would bring that out from underneath the radical, and I'd have 5 times the square root of 2. Another approach to this problem is to take the number 50 and decide if there is a number in this list, and you want to look for the biggest number in this list, that goes into 50, divides into 50. So just get your calculator out. 50 divided by 25 is twice. And so what you would have is 50 is 25 times 2, and this right here is equal to 5, so you have 5 times the square root of 2. You know, it really doesn't matter which approach you like. Because factors are pretty easy for me, I like this approach. I like this second approach. But this works real well for some people when we start um, putting variables in as factors. Let's do another one. So the number 600. I want to simplify the square root of 600. I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but, you know, I'm not taking my calculator and typing in the square root of 600 and getting a decimal value. I'm reducing this radical. I'm simplifying this radical expression. Much like we take the fraction in two-fourths and we reduce it or simplify it and call it one-half, that's the concept of what I'm trying uh, you to get a handle on here. So, um, again, you know, let's go with the easy approach, if you will, here first. I go right to that bottom number in the list, and I say, geez, 100 times 6 is 600. And I didn't have to think of all the prime factors of 600, which is a bit of work. And then I would say to myself, well, I know that the square root of 100 is 10. And I'm all done. I've simplified that radical expression. I'm going to peek at my notes here because I, I don't want to take the time to do the factor tree of 600, and I found out that 600 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. So all of those multiplied together will give you 600. So what I noticed is that there's a pair of 2's and there's a pair of 5's. I can pull those out from underneath the radical because the square root of 2 squared is 2. 
The square root of 5 squared is 5, so I have 2 times 5, or 10, out in front. And this 2 times 3 is the 6. And so you just have to remember that there's a lot of dots in here, multiplication, and you're pulling those out in front, and it means 10 times the square root of 6. So those had to be multiplied together. Simplifying radical expressions. You decide. Again, this is kind of the approach I like to try, but we often focus and teach it uh, this way. Let's see, maybe one more. Um, actually, this one, 486. You know, find this, the simplify the square root of 486. So when I first did this one, I think I noticed that 9 times 9 times 6 is 486. Those aren't primes yet, but it doesn't matter. I happen to have two pairs. And the square root of 9 times 9 is um, the square root of 81, which is 9. And so I have 9 times the square root of 6. Another thing I could have done is I could have, you know, 81 is in this list. And it is um, very likely that you would find that if you divided 486 in your, with your calculator by 81, you would get 6. And then you would be able to say, well, the square root of 81 is 9, and that comes out from under the radical, and the 6 has to stay underneath. Um, I think we'll, we'll pause now, and we're going to introduce some variables in the next segment. We're still going to simplify radicals, but we're going to start putting some x's and y's in there.